Good morning, Grace family, and welcome to our digital worship experience. We're excited to be able to gather together on this Sunday morning to worship God in spirit and in truth. This is the first Sunday in the month of October, and we're excited about all that God has done and all that we believe in God to continue to do for us, in us, and through us for the rest of this year. As we celebrate the sacrament of communion, I want to remind everyone, it is not about the particulars of the elements, but make sure that you prepare yourselves, grab something, um, crackers, grab a piece of bread, grab some water, grab some juice, grab something so that when we come to the moment of celebrating the meal, the sacred meal, that we can all do that together in spirit and in truth and in solidarity about what we believe about that moment. Amen. Come on, let us go to God in prayer. Gracious and almighty God, we thank you so much for this beautiful day that you have blessed us to live, see, and have our being. We thank you, O oh God, for the gift of community and the opportunity to gather together as a family, O oh God. We're just asking that you continue to pour out your spirit upon us, O oh God. Pour out your anointing, your authority, your blessings upon us so that we might do the work that you have assigned to our hands, O oh God. God, we thank you for bringing us through this week past, O oh God. We know that for many, this has been a tumultuous week, O oh God, with itineraries, with deadlines, with chaos, with demandings of the job oh god we thank you that through it all you brought us to this moment where we are able to say thank you oh god we're able to say thank you for being a keeper thank you for sustaining us thank you for continuing to preserve our minds our heart our strength our soul oh god we thank you oh god god we pray right now for those who among us who need you, oh God, in this moment. We pray for those who are experiencing bereavement, oh God. Comfort their hearts and their souls, oh God. We pray right now for those that need your touch of healing, oh God. We just pray for this community, oh God. Continue to have your way. Lead God and direct us as you see fit, oh God, so that we might give ourselves to your service, oh God, all for your glory. We love you, God. We thank you, God. We trust you, God. We believe you, God. Help our unbelief. It's in your holy and precious name we pray, and we say, Amen. I want to clap my hands louder than before. I want to sing a little louder than before.
Oh
amen, amen, amen. We thank God for our music ministry as always leading us and guiding us in and ushering us into a space of sacred worship in these Sunday morning experiences. And as we continue in this worship service, um, I, I know that this is Communion Sunday and we will definitely celebrate communion, but as it pertains to the fellowship, communion speaks about the togetherness of the community. Um, I'm excited to share that on next Sunday, uh, second Sunday in October, we will be gathering together at Communities Hope Impact Center, which is at 212 Cooper Street, right here in the Wall Street community. It's our community center. And we're gonna be gathering there for worship, for in-person worship. So come on out at 10 o'clock on Sunday. Um, bring your lawn chairs if you want to just sit and spread out across the lawn. Um, and we're going to have an awesome time to be able to fellowship uh, together as a family. We're trying our best uh, to navigate through this pandemic and, and to do all that we can do to safely uh, be a community and fellowship one with another. So please, we're excited. Mark your calendars, share the word, bring a friend, um, and, and join us as we worship together in person outside at our community center on next Sunday. Amen. Amen. I want to share uh, today from the book of Isaiah. Uh, I want to lift one verse in Isaiah 49, and then I want to flip over to Isaiah 54 and just lift the first three verses. Um, just by way of transparency, I'm not sure that this word will, will be for everybody on today, and, and I'm okay with that. Um, I, I, I had a conversation with someone this week about the necessity of joy, um, especially when you are pouring yourself out um, in service of God and the greater assignment. And uh, oftentimes in that work, uh, there is a lot that is done that no one will ever know about. And no one could then never appreciate. And so sometimes you have to carve out spaces to focus on joy. And so in all uh, honesty and transparency, I wanted to preach about joy on today because I need joy um, personally. And, and I share with you before, um, I preach what is real. And, and that's the reason why so many people can say, hey, you know, I connected to, to your word on today. Praise God, but, but I connect first because I preach what I experience, what I go through, I preach the gospel as flow through me as God shares and, and, and allows me to express to others. So um, that's a real responsibility. But I say that to say um, I was searching and trying to find scriptures about joy and, and, and trying to meditate on joy. And, and, and I thought I had something and I went and spent some time with God and I came back into the house. Mind you, I'm recording this on Friday and Mother Porter um, shared a prayer, but also a word about what it is to, um, to, to be patient with God, to trust and believe what God has shared, that you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And, and that stuck with me and I came home and in all honesty, I grabbed my Bible and I just turned my Bible, I opened it, and it landed here. And when I say that, that the Spirit of God just drew me into this passage, um, and so I just want to share that today. So Isaiah, the 49th chapter, I just want to lift verse 6 and then skipped over, skip over to chapter uh, 54 and read the first three verses. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Isaiah 49, chapter 6, and he says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. 
flip over the 40 to 54. Sing, O barren one who did not bear, burst into song and shout, you who have not been in labor, for the children of the desolate woman will be more than the children of her that is married, says the Lord. Enlarge the sight of your tent and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Do not hold back, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you were spread out to the right and to the left and your descendants will possess the nations and will settle the desolate towns. Let us pray. Oh God, may the words from my mouth and the collective meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, for you are indeed our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. And for that, we say thank you. Now, O oh God, use this vessel. Speak, for we need to hear from you, O oh God, and you alone. We trust you, O oh God. We believe you. Help our unbelief. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. And we say amen. Amen. I want to read that again. Sing, O barren one who did not bear, burst into song and shout, you who have not been in labor. For the children of the desolate woman will be more than the children of her that is married, says the Lord. Enlarge the sight of your tent and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Do not hold back, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left, and your descendants will possess the nations and will settle the desolate towns. I want to speak today from the thought, go tell it on the mountain. Go and tell it on the mountain. Tell it on the rooftops. Tell it as loud as you can. Go and tell what God has given you to share. I say that because oftentimes, and I speak from personal experience, that this work is not cut out for the weak of heart. This work is not cut out for those who are looking for an easy pathway to what it means to be faithful unto God. And oftentimes it is difficult to put into context that which God has shown or that which God has begun to reveal to you what is your assignment, what is your call, what is your purpose, especially when it does not I immediately I connect with what you see for yourselves. Like, it is difficult to say, man, God, why would you position me? Why would you give me passion? Why would you call me? Why would you give me a connection to something that, that very well does not seem easily done? Many of us have had these types of conversations with God as we walk on our journeys of faith. And one of the things that I believe is all too important is to recognize those moments when we want to actually give up. Anybody there where you've seen too much, where the weight seems too unbearable, where it seems as though there are too many working against than are working for because you continue to view where you are through your human lens. A God tells us through scripture, especially when we look at that, that moment with David and Samuel where he works through Samuel to let Samuel know that God does not look as humans look. And oftentimes, because we are human, we look at our circumstances through the lens of our human, our human eyes and we see what is impossible. And oftentimes that begins to feed our psychology, feed our emotions, feed our state of mind to say that you know what, God, no matter what I want to believe about you, I don't know that this is really worth it. Those are the moments that many of us cross in our, in our lives of faith 
where we get to those uncertain places where it's difficult to hold on and difficult to maintain and, and difficult to actually live into the purpose that God, that God has embedded in our soul. I want to look at this passage in the book of Isaiah. As I've shared before, and for our own sake of context and scholarship, Isaiah, as we have it captured in, the, in, in our Bibles, as one book, Isaiah is actually three books. First Isaiah, it consists of the first 39 chapters. And then second Isaiah is chapter 40 through 55. And then third Isaiah is chapter 56 to the end of the book. And, and why is that important? It's important because Oftentimes we look at Isaiah and we think that we're looking at one singular voice. And this is a composition. This spans the time. And if you're wanting to do some study on the book of Isaiah, include the books of Ezra and Nehemiah because there's some overlap in terms of the time period and what's happening. And, and here, as we look at this chapter 49 and chapter 54, we're finding ourselves solely in the middle of 2nd Isaiah. Isaiah, which first Isaiah deals with the children of Israel as they have been exiled in Babylon. And so we, we are finding an account from a people who have been separated from their holy land, separated from what they know as, as their only homeland, separated from the space and the place in which the God of their ancestors had delivered unto them. This people have been separated. That's first Isaiah. Now in 2nd Isaiah, we're dealing with a transition period where God began to move and God began to orchestrate and work through Cyrus the king and to begin to open the door where Israel would be able to find their way back to Jerusalem, find their way back to their sacred land, find their way back to their homeland. And, and that's where we are in 2nd Isaiah and, and here, as you read this chapter, sometimes it can be confusing because you'll find that the account is written not just from a personal, a singular, singular personal perspective, but it is also written from the account of Israel. So when you hear them talk about servant, it is talking about the prophet, but it is also talking about Israel as a whole. And I don't mean to be confusing, but this context is so vitally important to understanding the wealth of, of knowledge and truth that we can glean from this sacred text. So here in this transition period, you have this prophet and prophetic voice that is speaking to Israel and speaking to the writer to say, I need you to be prophetic for the people. And as the writer is, is gleaning and, and is communicating with God, and as God is speaking and seeking to move in prophetic ways through the writer, I want you to hear the writer in that verse 6. As God begins to let the writer know that how you think you know me, what you think you know about my assignment for your life, I want to add to that and hear the words of God saying to the writer and to Israel, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to just raise up the tribes of Jacob, of Israel, and to restore the survivors of Israel. It's, it's just, it's too light for you to think that the only assignment that I have for you is just to restore the sense of community for Israel, just to draw the, the scattered Israelites back home. It, it's too light, it's too little of an assignment for you to think that the only thing that I have for you to do is just to draw Israel back. No. He says, I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Here, can you imagine for Israel as a whole, but specifically for our purposes today, for the one receiving this prophetic word from God, 
that your divine assignment, the reason why I purposed you in your mother's womb, the reason why I have touched you with my anointing, the reason why I have ushered and guided your life to this moment, the reason I've done that is because for this moment, I need you to be expanded upon your assignment, not just to cons confer co not just to concern yourself with the matters of Israel, but I am now assigning you to be a light to the nations. Can you imagine having that word, having that assignment, having that call, and your responsibility is to help usher a people who have been exiled, separated from their homeland in Babylon, to now come back to the land in Jerusalem that is in tatters, that has been devastated, that has been destroyed. This land that, that, that most of them have no recollection of, most of them never knew. This land that for all practical purposes that is less than the land that they're living in in Babylon. Here is this one, a sign, a prophetic voice for the community of Israel. God was trying to tell them that the time has come for you to leave Babylon and go back home to Israel. Go back and rebuild. Think about the book of Nehemiah when Nehemiah attempts to rebuild the wall. Think about all that, that, that he has to go through just to rebuild the wall. God is trying to tell Israel, now is the time for you to move from where you've been exiled and go back to where I have originally assigned you to be. And I want you to go and endure the labor, endure the hardship, endure how much it's going to cost you to rebuild build the land but I want you to go home and rebuild I want the community to be reconstituted so that Israel can once again in the land of Jerusalem be my people here is where I want to land today I can feel the weight of this prophetic voice because I want you to imagine telling people in Babylon who knew nothing about Israel, who carved out a life for themselves, who made a way to make a living, who, who had a nice and, and comfortable abode, who, who was able to, to build neighbor, neighbor and neighborhoods and, and build friendships. And, and you had these folks who now said, man, why would I uproot my entire life and go back to a place that I never knew. Why would I inconvenience myself to go and do something that only you are telling me God says it's time for us to do? Why would I subject myself and my family to sacrifices that we don't have to make in order to live a comfortable life and go into a place that I don't know, I don't know the people where it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be hardships, it's gonna be a lot of work where we're gonna have to rebuild. Why would I do all of that? Can you see and feel the weight of this prophetic voice who has to look at those individuals and say, why what you say is true, this is what God desires for us. I know you can't see it yet, but this is what God desires for God's people. I know that it's difficult for you to process, but this is what God has assigned for his people. And can you imagine the weight of trying to help convince and inspire people to leave what is, pref what is preferential to their desires and go to some place, a place where they have no idea what they're going to encounter. They don't know the hardship. It is dark. It is is not clear the pathway is not laid why would I leave this place to go to an unknown there my brother and sister I do believe is the word that God has for us see one of the things that is most difficult about this walk 
And sometimes we don't even understand how to relate to why this book is so sacred. It's sacred because given that we are human beings, that we find ourselves facing a lot of the same circumstances, a lot of the same trials, a lot of the same obstacles that our brothers face, and brothers and sisters faced long time ago, where God may be trying to move us to a space where we have no frame of reference, where we have no context, where we have no idea all of the work, we have no idea what awaits us. We are blind going into a space and the only thing that's leading us is the fact that God says, this is what I desire. That's the reason why many of us will find ourselves as much as we want to celebrate that faith, many of us are just like those who said, I don't know if I want to leave Babylon, right? I'm comfortable in Babylon. I know Babylon. I've made my affairs in Babylon. I make money in Babylon. I've, I've carved out a way for us to live in Babylon. I'm good in Babylon. How many people can be honest with themselves and say that there are spaces in our lives where we resonate more with those who would desire to stay in Babylon? I'm good. I'm good. I'm comfortable in Babylon. I don't know nothing about Jerusalem, never been there. I've heard the stories about it. I've heard how God moved on behalf of God's people. I've heard how David brought the presence of God to Jerusalem. I've heard how God has said that this will be a space for my people. I've heard that it is sacred in the history of my people, but I don't know it. How many of us can relate to that? that there are things that God may be calling us to, spaces that God is calling us to be in and stand in. And, and oftentimes, many of us will be just like some of those Israelites. I'd rather stay in Babylon than to engage in an unknown and in, and in a foreign space where I have no idea what lies ahead of me. That's where this prophet is standing, in the middle of those two realities. So the question then for us is, what do you do in that moment? And I can imagine the prophet saying, man, God, why would you call me to deliver this message to this people during this season? They don't want to hear this. They've already carved out what their lives are. They've already got their rhythms and their routines. They've already got their desires and their goals and their dreams. They already know how they're going to make it for the next 20, 30 years. They don't have a desire to hear anything from me about what you desire for them to be standing in a place that they don't even know. Why would you put the pressure upon the prophet God to be able to inspire these folks to move from a known to an unknown. That's the most difficult part of this work of faith is how do you move a people from a known to an unknown? I love this passage of scripture because if you look at that verse 54 and the chapter 54, you'll find that as the servant leader, the prophet, is continuing to be obedient to God, to hear from God, to speak the word of God, whether they want to hear it or not, whether they like it or not. The prophet sought to be obedient to God and hear the words that God gave unto the prophet. Tell the people that, that they think that they are prosperous over in Babylon. But here is the message that I want you to tell Israel. Tell them, sing, 
O barren one who did not bear and burst into song, you who have not been in labor for the children of the desolate woman will be more than the children of her that is married, says the Lord. Tell them over there, they think that they've been prosperous over there. They think that they have come up over there. They think that they've carved out a living over there, but there, they're still barren because I'm trying to take them to a place where they don't even know the fruitfulness yet because they have not tasted and seen what God will do. Tell them over there that they are barren, but in the land where I'm trying to lead them, I'm going to let them know that they will be fruitful if they trust me. And I love this, I love this. He says, this is the inspiring words that God gives. Enlarge the sight of your tent and let your curtains, let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Do not hold back. Lengthen the cords and strengthen your stakes for you will spread out to the right and to the left and your descendants will possess the nations and will settle the desolate towns. My God, sometimes when you need to be reminded of why you are as faithful as you are, why you hold on as strong as you do, why you don't allow circumstances to cause you to give up, why you don't allow the voices of faithless naysayers to, to push you out of the place of faith that God is trying to build you in. When you need to be reminded, hear the words that God has delivered to the prophet to help convince those folk who were satisfied staying in Babylon to get to the place where God is calling them to be. Hear the words of God. God says, I'm about to enlarge your territory. I want you to enlarge the site of your tent. Right now in Babylon, you think you are good because you have carved out a safe way of being. But God said, I want you to tell them that what they have right now, they are living with an HOA that only allows them to have 2.3 acres. But I want you to, or 0.23 acres, but I want you to help them to understand that if they are faithful to where I want to lead them. I'm going to lead them to a place where they're going to have five, six, ten acres to spread out upon themselves that they can spread and enlarge their tent, allow their blinds, don't constrict any part of your living anymore because you've been constricted in that place. You've learned to be constricted. You've learned to live constricted, but I'm trying to deliver you into a place where I have said that it's flowing like milk and honey where you can spread out and be everything that I have destined you to be. Enlarge your territory. Spread out. Don't hold back and trust that if you follow my lead, I will lead you to a place that, yeah, it might be a little jacked up. Yeah, it might take a whole lot of work. But I promise you, not only will you, but your descendants will benefit from the walk of faith that you have if you're willing to leave the Babylon that you know and go back to the sacred space of Jerusalem that you never ever met. My brother, my sister, the question for us is, are you willing to leave that which you think you know? Huh? How many of us know folks who are refusing to engage the unknown because they're scared? And when you're scared, all you know is, I'm going to hold on to what I know. I'll hold on to the same old traditional way. I'll hold on to the same old, old drama. I'll hold on to the same old things that used to occupy our time, that never led us to anywhere productive. I'll hold on to what I know, as opposed to going to where God is trying to lead us. Lead. Whether you are one of them, or whether God has given you a prophetic voice to inspire people to put you on Broad Street, 
to help you usher people and deliver a message to the world that this is what God desires. Wherever God has you, the question is, will you tell it? My brother, my sister, I encourage you today. What God has placed on your heart, stop holding back. Stop being reserved. Stop trying to be afraid or ashamed. Man, call the spade the spade. If it is not of the will of God, call it out. If it is something that God has placed in your soul, speak it out. Begin to put it into the atmosphere. Do not be afraid. Go and tell it on the mouth. I'm going to tell everybody that's willing to listen and those that don't want to listen. I'm going to tell what the Lord has said to me. I'm going to let you know that this is the work that God has called me to. I'm going to let you know that God has gifted and pla placed in my heart to be of service in this particular way. I'm going to do the the will of God no matter what. Whatever that is, go tell it on the mountain because once you release it, oh, it's a freedom that helps you to know the now that is out there, I can't run from it. I got to live into it. That's our prayer today is that we begin to live in to what God has placed in us that God wants to work through us that God wants to make an impact into God's creation. My brother, my sister, wherever you are, listen, trust God. Don't put your trust in people because they will fail you. They will betray you. They will turn on you. They will be finicky with you. Don't trust people. Trust God. Trust what God has said. Trust what God has placed in your soul. Trust what God is telling you to do. And if you, don't, you ain't sure if it's God, then I promise you, if, it's, if it only feeds your preferences, you might want to take that back to the Lord in prayer. If it only makes you feel good and think you are, that you are right, take it back to the Lord in prayer. Because oftentimes, this work is going to call for you to sacrifice in ways that isn't comfortable, that you don't desire, but in your soul, you know you have no choice. Whatever God has placed in your heart, don't be afraid to live it and to tell it. If you are in a space where you don't know God for yourself, my brother and my sister, we offer, we offer the gift of relationship with God. It's nothing that we can give. It's just what we encourage. Say yes to God. Trust God. Trust that God is trying to move in your life. If you know God, but you're not connected to a community. I promise you we are not the perfect community, but there's no such thing. But if in your soul you know that God is, is calling you and uniting you to this fellowship, this body, then trust God. Join this body. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to figure out how you fit in. Don't try to figure out what tomorrow will look like. Trust God and trust that God will continue to order your steps. Beloved, let's go to God in prayer. God, we thank you for this reminder. We thank you for this opportunity, oh God, to, to ask for your forgiveness, for the ways in which we have shied away from living into the fullness of your truth of our lives, for our lives, for ways in which we have shied away from living into the fullness of your power that you have invested in us, oh God. We ask that you forgive us. God, Remind us that we are more than conquerors. Remind us, oh God, that we have been, been built for this. Remind us, oh God, that we are yours and you are seeking to use us. Wherever we are weak, build us, oh God. Wherever we are arrogant, break us, oh God. Wherever, oh God, that we are lost, find us, God, and bring us back to you. We love you, oh God. We trust you. We thank you. We honor you. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. And we say amen. Amen. Listen, my brothers and my sister, as we continue to worship, we invite you to sacrifice with us. There's no need for us to go into the full diatribe because we say it every week, but this is a part of our worship experience. As God has shaped us as community, we covenant to say that God the first fruit of whatever you bless us with, we're rendering unto you for the work that you have assigned us and this community to do. That is it. That is a part of our practice of faith and of worship. So whatever 
God has blessed you with. It's not about being equal in the mounts. It's about being equal in sacrifice. Whatever you have, let's give, let's give God thanks for it. God, we thank you for these, your tithes and our offerings of love and sacrifice. We pray that you receive them, bless them, multiply them, O oh God, so that we might be able to use them for the work that you've assigned to our hands. Help us to be good and faithful stewards of everything you so graciously give unto us. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. And we say, amen. Amen. Listen, this is our communion Sunday. And whatever you have, we invite you to prepare it now and get it, bring it. Make sure that you're able to participate in this. Yes, this is a sacrament. Yes, this is a symbol. This is a sign. But it is no less powerful because we engage it together as a family and in faith. Remember, remember what Jesus was trying to convey to his disciples. On that night when he knew his end was drawing near, he took what was an ordinary meal and sought to give it extraordinary meaning and value. And he said, this bread that we're about to eat, it represents my body, which will be willingly broken for you. Every time you have a meal and share in this common special meal, I want you to remember that I willingly allow my body, my body to be broken. I willingly allow myself to sacrifice. I willingly obeyed the assignment of my life, even though it led me down the dark valley. I willingly did it because it pleased my father. And when you think about that, remind yourself of what God has assigned you to do and give thanks. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to them and said, This is my blood, which is a sign of the new covenant, which will be established for all those who believe and follow me. Every time you drink of it, remember the cost of obedience to our Father. Remember the sacrifice that you must be willing to make and give thanks. Beloved, let us consume this sacred meal. And we say amen, amen, amen. Listen, we thank God for allowing you to worship with us on this Sunday. It is always our prayer that something transpires to bring you closer in your relationship and your walk of faith with God. As we prepare to close out, let us sing our closing song, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. forever bless and always keep us may he always raise his countenance and allow his face to forever shine upon us may that same god continue to remind us to live boldly to faith forward and to always love unconditionally from now until we meet again on the other side where the sun neither rises nor sets for the sun is jesus the christ who's in the light of the world it's in his name that we pray let all of god's children say Amen.